then I just looked at them all, and I heard somebody just like say under their breath, Cyclops, one eye. And I remember I just gathered my stuff and ran out of the room. And I went into the guidance counselor, and I said, it is not fair. I cannot pass speech class. I am handicapped. You need to understand this is too difficult for me to get up in front of 12 people and make a speech. And they said, you know what? You are correct. We are going to waive the requirement for you. You're not going to do public speaking. Never. I will never do public speaking. They said, well, waive the requirement. Just take another English course. I said, I will. And then I remember I thought, while I'm at it, I'm going to ask for another class. I said, there's another class I'm having a really hard time in. And they said, what's that? I said, typing. Typing is impossible for me. Now, back then, we had typewriters in front of us, and then we had paper over here. Okay, I'm like, where's my hands? Am I on the keys? I can't even see to write there. And when they make us turn, I was like, oh my gosh. And sometimes my, my fingers would be just off one key and you'd look at it, it'd be cussing. You know, like 30 words per minute cussing. Just, I was like, I cannot do this. They said, you know what? You can, you can have someone pay, you could pay someone to type your, your college papers. I said, I so will. And so I walked out of that guidance class feeling free, feeling like 100 pounds had come off my shoulders. I will never type. I will never speak in front of people. I am free. And God is laughing. God is totally laughing. He's like, baby, baby, we just know it's too hard for you right now. We're going to give you a break from the typing because you are either going to be writing books or editing your husband's books for the rest of your life. You don't want to get up in front of 12 people? We know that's too hard. We'll just wait. And then we'll make it hundreds, thousands. We'll put you on TV just to push you to the edge of diarrhea. We're just going to, we're just going to do that for you. Okay, see, God is not interested in the areas where you are strong and he is weak. God is interested in the areas where he is strong in your life. You, you, are, you are custom made to give him all the glory. You are custom made. And God thinks it's funny. Funny. There's like world's funniest videos in heaven. Let's watch Lisa throw up. Let's see this. God loves that. He's like a parent who knows that when you face what you fear, you become fearless. And daughters, he wants you totally free so you can be totally his. It is for freedom that Christ has set you free. Not for ministry, not for heaven, not so you stop annoying your husband. It is for freedom that Christ has set you free. God has equipped you with everything you have need of. I looked at Joyce last night, I said, there, there's, there's no more excuses, there's, there's nothing. There's nothing that hasn't been put in your hands this weekend. The presence of God, the, the leadership teaching of John Maxwell, I mean, you have had this atmosphere of an open heaven fostered. And you have had every tool that you have need of presented from every single angle. Joyce prostrate across a boat with sparkles on her feet. If you can't get it with the I Love Lucy anointing, you just aren't going to get it. But it was just so amazing. Every single area has been provided for you. And so... You guys, it's, it's time. You don't want to have limits. You don't want to live in a realm that is small. You want God to enlarge your life. The next thing I want to say about confident women, they know how to handle their sword. They know how to handle their sword. Now, John got sent a two-edged broadsword from Germany. And I like to pretend like I'm buff, but I'm not. But I like to pretend like I'm buff. And it was put across his desk, this big, huge broadsword. And I decided I wanted to go pick it up. And so I went into his office to pick up the broadsword. And when I went to grab it, first of all, the grip was kind of large for my hands, which kind of made it hard to hold it. But I was like Braveheart, woman, Xena, princess, warrior. And I'm just kind of like grabbing the sword. And I pick it up, and my arm starts shaking. And that was when I remembered, oh, that's right, my, my triceps don't work. My, now, my boys enjoy my triceps. They spin them. They come into the kitchen, and they go, look at Mommy's arms. Mommy, you have squishy arms. Mommy's got squishy arms. Look, spin Mommy's arms. I'm like, stop it. 
something that is evil. Your wife will be very angry with you for spinning triceps. Don't touch my, oh, we think it's cute. No, there's nothing cute about spinning triceps. Don't do that to me. I thought, okay, it's a two-edged sword and I can't pick it up with one arm. It was just kind of like the tip was still on the table. I'll pick it up with two. And so I remember I picked it up with two arms, and I was just kind of in the, in the office trying not to take out one of John's lamps with the sword, kind of just standing there. But I thought, you don't just stand in the middle of a room with a sword. You look at yourself with them in the mirror. And so now I had to navigate out of John's office to the bathroom to look at myself with a mirror. And I'm trying not to take out the drywall on the way. And I'm, I'm going into the mirror and I'm looking at myself, trying to act like I'm all intimidating with my sword. And I just heard the Holy Spirit say to me, I have entrusted the edge of my sword. And you know, his, his word is likened to a two-edged sword to my sons, to execute justice, judgment, and protection. But to my daughters, I give the flat of the sword to transfer honor and title. See, I was really good with like this level, but as soon as it came up, the triceps kicked in and we had a problem. Women, we are anointed to separate the men as the princes of the Most High God. We can transfer title, legacy, and honor. We are to use the administration of God's word to elevate life, to preserve life, to extend life, to raise the level of life. When the men were conquering the West, they set up saloons and brothels. It wasn't until the women came that the schools came and the churches came. Women give men a reason behind their labor, and we need those that wield the sword in justice, and we need those that wield the sword in the court to, to, to transfer honor and glory. Women are decide, uh, def defined and described as the glory of the man. Now, that used to really tick me off, because man is the glory of God, woman is the glory of man. Like, I want to be the glory of God. I want John to be the glory of me. I don't want to be the glory of man. I want to be the glory of God. But see, what collectively, male and female, mankind, Psalm 8 tells us, represents the glory of God. But in the male-female relationship, the woman is the glory. And we need to define glory to understand what that is. Glory is that which inspires awe, wonder, or splendor. See, I can go up into my boy's bathroom, and there is... No fragrance. There is no thing that would draw you to relationship. I'm convinced boys are the, the best conservers of water. Why flush a toilet if more people are going to use it? I can't, I, I don't understand that, but I will go through the bathrooms and it'll be like, what, what would be so hard about this? Oh yeah, that's great mom, go ahead and do it. I mean, it's upstairs. I try not to go up there very often, towels on the floor. There's nothing that is fostering fragrance. There's nothing that is fostering beauty. Actually, my 11-year-old is really celebrating things that stink right now. He's always like, Mom, smell my underarm. I'm like, okay, that's really manly. That's great. Look at my hairs. He's like pulling them out. I'm like, okay, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's really nice. I mean, guys are just totally different wired. But if you go down to my bathroom, there's fragrance. There's lotion. There's elements of beauty. Why? Because I want my husband, when he sees me, to want to draw me near. Women are the ones that connect the relationship. We are the ones.